Please note, during the COVID-19 pandemic, staff will be wearing full personal protective equipment to keep you safe while in hospital. This video will provide answers to many questions and alleviate some of the anxieties you may have about your first chemotherapy or immunotherapy treatment. One-to-one -one sessions with a chemotherapy-trained nurse or Macmillan treatment information leaflets can give you additional information. For many patients, chemo or immunotherapy is given in an outpatient setting. In this case, there are a few things you need to know. On the day of your treatment, we encourage you to eat a good breakfast, but you may wish to bring along your own food and drink. If you are receiving your treatment via intravenous or subcutaneous injection, we would encourage you to wear comfortable clothing that allows easy access to your arms and chest, such as a loose top or button-down shirt. Once you have arrived and have checked in at reception, you will be greeted by a member of staff who will bring you into the day unit where a nurse will supervise your care. Most patients will spend a minimum of three hours here. However, some chemo appointments can last up to seven hours. In order to pass the time, you may bring iPads, electronics or books with you. We also have free Wi-Fi in the unit. When it's time to start your treatment, two nurses will do a final safety check before administering your chemo. This includes checking your patient identity bracelet. Most chemotherapy is given intravenously via a small cannula which is inserted into the vein but in some cases is given in tablet form. You may be offered a heat pad to dilate the veins and facilitate insertion of the cannula for intravenous chemotherapy. Some patients may require a pick line which remains in place throughout the course of your treatment. If required, the nurse will explain all the necessary information about pick lines with you individually. Because chemo is a type of cancer treatment that uses medications to destroy or slow down the growth of cancer cells, it can also harm healthy cells, such as those in your mouth, intestines, blood and nerve cells, as well as those that cause your hair to grow. It is important you notify your nurse of any medications or supplements you are currently taking at home. Medications that are given to help manage anticipated side effects will likely be given to you up to a day prior to your treatment. Not everyone will experience the same side effects and not every chemotherapy treatment will cause hair loss. If this does occur, however, you may be able to have a treatment known as scalp cooling. This is where a cold cap is applied which cools the head and reduces the flow of chemotherapy to the scalp and can prevent hair loss. When patients are expected to lose their hair, it typically occurs within two to three weeks. Some patients will also lose their eyebrows, lashes, underarm, pubic and leg hair. This may present as hair thinning, patchy or total hair loss. Most hair loss is temporary and this is expected to grow back once treatment is completed. When hair growth resumes, it may grow back a different colour or texture. If you lose your hair, please be reassured we are here to support you and we will also be able to refer you to a wig specialist. You are entitled to an NHS subsidy towards a wig, but there are also other ways of dealing with hair loss should you choose not to have a wig and your nurse can advise you on all of these options. Nausea and vomiting are two of our patients' greatest concerns. Fortunately, we are doing a better job than ever in controlling this. Alongside medications you can discuss with your doctor, it is often helpful to eliminate spicy, fatty or acidic foods. Many patients find that eating small, frequent meals, taking light to moderate exercise and including ginger and peppermint in their diets can offer relief. If weight loss due to nausea and vomiting becomes a problem during treatment, we can always refer you to our cancer specialist dietitian to assist with your nutritional needs. If you are taking nausea medication and still experiencing uncontrolled nausea or even vomiting, you should contact the helpline right away. Change in bowel habits can occur during chemo and immunotherapy treatments. If you experience diarrhea, this can lead to fatigue, skin irritation and dehydration, so be sure to stay hydrated. If you experience constipation, this could cause pain, rectal irritation, hemorrhoids or anal tears, which can lead to bleeding or infection. Moderate exercise, increasing your fluid and fiber intake are recommended to offer relief. If either of these issues persist, it is important that you contact the helpline to see if further treatment is necessary. Some patients will experience changes in the color of their urine during chemo. Your chemotherapies are clear, but some are red or blue. 
This will change the color of your urine to an orange, green or purple color. This is temporary and will subside within 24 to 48 hours, depending on how well hydrated you are. Following your chemo, it is expected that your blood counts will drop. This includes your red and white cells, as well as your platelets. Remember, when you are receiving chemo, it affects cancer cells and healthy cells. When your red blood cells are low, you feel more tired. This is because your body is having to work harder to deliver oxygen to all the tissues in your body. It can take more time to complete simple tasks due to low energy levels. When your white blood cells are low, it puts you at a greater risk of infection. Some things that you can do to prevent infection are good hand washing, avoiding crowded places, preparing food in a clean environment, and avoiding people who are sick. It is important for you to have an easy to read thermometer in your home. This is because you may be at risk of sepsis. Signs of sepsis are a temperature above 38 degrees Celsius and flu-like symptoms of aching or shivering. In the event that you feel you may have a fever, contact the helpline immediately. Further precautions related to your risk for infection can be found in your information pack that will be provided at your time of treatment. In addition to your red and white blood cells, your platelets may be low. Your platelets function like glue in your blood and they are what keep you from bleeding and bruising. It's important to avoid abrasive products that may cause you to bleed. Using a soft or electric toothbrush and electric shaver are recommended. Medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen or blood thinners should be discussed with your nurse or doctor first. As part of your treatment, your doctor may order medications to improve your blood counts. If you have pets in your home, please discuss this with your healthcare team and whether there are any special precautions you should take whilst undergoing treatment. Some of the medications you are taking may cause a condition called neuropathy. This is the sensation of tingling, numbness or pain in your fingers or toes. Other types of changes can include decreased strength or mobility or sensitivity to cold. You may find difficulty with day-to-day -day activities such as walking, picking things up or buttoning shirts. Once you are caring for yourself at home, it is important that you inform your nurse and doctor of any side effects or symptoms at your pre-chemo review. If you experience any of the following, however, please contact us immediately using the emergency contact details given to you in your information pack. At some point during your cancer journey, you may require additional support services. Your clinical nurse specialist and Macmillan support worker are trained in helping in these areas. Please refer to your information pack about available resources that may help guide you in making plans for the future.